See, you know, we have a guest on, and, and obviously we do our research, and you know, we pull up their baseball reference page. This might be one of the most consistent guys we have seen in a very long time. You look at Nolan Arenado's baseball reference page, it's just like year in, year out. The man produces. So, Nolan, you're just going to have to share all your keys to consistent excellence with us today, man. Thank you for being with us. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for having yeah. me, man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, no, we appreciate you coming on. I just wanted to ask you real quick, how was the London experience, man? I know uh, you guys just got back from from that, probably still a little jet lag. I know I am. Uh, yeah. But how was the experience playing over there? It was great, man. It was really cool. Um you know, London was it's such a pretty place. Uh, the weather was humid, but it wasn't too bad. Um, you know, that stadium was really cool. How they did a great job putting it as a baseball field. And uh, no, I had a great time, man. It was really fun. Uh, it was great that it was the Cubs Cardinals. You know, that rivalry is fantastic. And uh, mm -hmm. the first game was tough, but it was good to have a ha happy flight back home on a win. The flight home was a little rough. I'm not gonna lie, nine nine hours and thirty minutes is a little, <laughs> a little long, but. Uh, yeah. But it was a good time. We had a great time together. Still recovering a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting back to normal now. Yeah, I'm glad you went to. You brought up London there, C, because I was wondering about that because you look like you're having an amazing time, C. Oh yeah, I had a great time, but I didn't have to play in the games. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? So, so I, I couldn't imagine. Like I just know how my body felt just walking around the city and like being a tourist and hanging out for the games. I couldn't imagine like getting ready to, you know, actually playing the major league game over there. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't easy for sure playing baseball there, but you know, it's part of the experience. You know, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. So it was fun. You know, you try not to look at it as like, uh, you know, when you go do something like that, you try not to look at it as like, Oh, this is like, this isn't part of the routine. You know, I don't get the those home days in my own bed. You know, I try to just try to enjoy it as much as I can just, you know, really took in the moment. So it was fun. When you do it like that, it was good. Wait, it's almost, the, Ruko, I was just yeah. thinking, like, because we played there in 19, it's almost better if you play there a whole week. Like, if you mm, play yeah. a, a week worth of games there, you know what I'm saying, to get adjusted and everything, like, two, like four days, two days, and two games is, like, makes it a little hard. But if you had, you know, a series or two there, then I think it would make it a little better. Yeah, I but, think at least a three-game series, at least. You know, two games mm -hmm. is, doesn't seem like enough for me. But, uh, but like I said, it, I agree, a week long would be pretty cool. It'd definitely be worth it. How, how were the crowds there for the games? They were great. They were great. Yeah. I mean, it was packed. Um, you know, it got loud. You know, those those games, Cardinal Cubs game, wherever they play, they're going to be kind of loud. You know, so yeah, uh, it, it was loud, and the fans seemed uh, seemed like they had a great time. Um, it was cool to bring baseball there. You know, it, it's just funny. Like it's such a soccer, you know, soccer <laughs> soccer place, and to see that, that you know, to have baseball there. It was really cool to see, and the fans seemed like they really enjoyed it. Something different coming to their, you know, their country. So it was fun. Yeah, we. I know, like when C went in nineteen, I got to go uh, with them and and with the Yes Network, and we we still to this day, I'm like, that's one of my favorite career experiences ever. Just like being with the Yankees in London, right. it was it was awesome. I was glad to see you guys going back. And now, uh, I, Nolan, you obviously. You, you know, with St. Louis, I mean, this is part of the reason you guys go over there. This is a premier franchise. When, when we talk about professional sports, certainly when we talk about Major League Baseball, been there a few years now. I'm curious about that. Like, in what ways do you feel the weight of the St. Louis Cardinal uniform? In what ways do you feel the prestige of being a part of this organization? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I mean, CC here, Bobby attest to how the Yankees are. I probably can't, yeah. obviously I can't relate to the Yankees, but I could, you know, relate to a historic organization that expects excellence and expects winning. Um, just being in this organization from where I came, it's just a totally different feeling. You know, it's just, you know, when you sit in the stands, you know, or you're sitting, you know, during the game, they show them the big screen. Ozzy Smith is there. Whitey Herzog's always there. Willie McGee is one of our coaches. Um, there's always like David Freeze is in the stands, you know, like there's always like former Cardinals that are always around and it's almost like you're representing it, all of them. So you got to be like on your A game. You just feel that sense of like, you know, you don't want to let them down or or anything like that. It's just like a, I don't know, like when you put the, the Cardinal uniform on, it just feels different. The stitching is different than any other uniform. All those like little things, I guess. So it's definitely different. It's definitely something we got to take pride in because it's not easy. And uh, like I said, there's an ex expectation when you put the uniform on. Yeah, it's something that we always talk about, Ruko, on the podcast is just, 
um, the culture, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the, the culture of winning and having those old players around, it makes you want to be a part of that. You know, like when you're with the Yankees and, I, you know, Yogi was around and, and you know, Whitey Ford and, and Ron Guidry, like it makes you want, you know, people to remember your name in that uniform in that way. So it's just like gatekeeping the culture. So it's, it's really cool to be able to play for these franchises that have a lot of history. And you really, you definitely feel the weight of it. Like he said, like Nolan said, the stitching on the Cardinals, like everything (laughs) is different when you play for these historical franchises. Yeah, you know, and this year's been tough. And uh, for our our organization, or this year, this far, and, uh, you know, hopefully we have a big second half. But you can feel it. You know, you almost feel that sense of like, whoa, like this organization doesn't, you know, we're losing and this organization does not do that. So it, it, you feel that weight, you know what I mean? For sure. It, it definitely feels different than anything I've been a part of. D- does it make it harder to get out of that, Nolan, as a team? I, to- I think, I mean, I think so a little bit, especially, you know, we have a lot of young guys and we're trying to push push through and try to find our way. But uh, there's definitely a weight there for sure. Like the, there's an expectation when you put this uniform, like I said, and, you, you know, you feel that weight, like, dang, we're losing, like, we do use this organization doesn't lose. Like you feel that when you're stepping on the field. So is that added pressure? Maybe, um, you know, I think we do feel it sometimes, but it's something that we're going to have to overcome if we want to get to where we want to go. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely a little bit of, you know, you, you feel that, especially when, you know, you start off struggling or you, you know, you having a, a tough half, like you feel, you know, the weight of, you know, everybody looking around, like what's going on, like how are we going to get out of this? Because these winning franchises don't never really have to get out of a rut. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So there's no really, you know, there's no sayings. There's no mantras. Like, you yeah. know, you're supposed to be winning games. So, yeah, right. it makes it a little harder <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, Nolan. You just brought up some of the, the former players that are there, including, you know, on your staff. And it reminds me of something, see, that we just talked about the other day with Barry Bonds. We had Barry Bonds on and and he was talking about – you know, obviously he has a unique perspective growing up in the game with a father who played, but the value he saw in being around guys and when he played like those guys being around the team and and how the Giants have brought him back now to be around them, but how in a lot of ways, sometimes in today's culture, guys, veteran guys, like don't necessarily feel welcome. They, they're not sure if they're wanted there. You know, things are a little bit more a- analytical from, you know, the, the teaching standpoint as well. And some of that veteran experience can be overlooked or not valued the same way that it was. I'm wondering for you, I mean, what does it mean to you and what tangible benefits do you get from having guys around who played the game and played it at such a high level, especially for an organization that you're now a part of. Yeah. Well, no, I think we, the game's changed so much, man. I mean, I think a lot of teams, what we're seeing is a lot of, there's a lot of young teams. I mean, CC could probably speak on it better than I can, but I feel like the way, you know, there's, there's groups that won a lot. It would be like a good mix of like a few young guys and then a good veteran guys that have been there for five, six, you know, they know how, like, you don't have to worry about them. They, they're doing their thing is different, you know, and it's just a different time now. So, I remember when I was a rookie, Todd Helton, you know, we, you know, I loved him and he was great. He was great to me. He was really hard on me, but we had nothing in common, right? He was, you know, a lot older than I am. And now yeah. it's funny, I'm here and I got Jordan Walker, who I'm 12 years older. You know, how am I going to relate to the young guy, you know, and I got to find a way to do it. And, you know, his, he likes different things than I like, of course, but it's like finding a way to like, you have to be willing to just be open and be able to communicate with these guys, let them know when they're doing something wrong, but also at the same time be there for them and know that, Hey, we got your back. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. So it's like, a, it's a weird mix. You know, it's a weird, you know, it's a totally different game now, like you said. And it, it does seem like sometimes, you know, like, I mean, CC, you know, like I said, speak on it, like you, you, t- you talk about your experiences and then it's almost like, yeah, but that was years ago, you know, like I'm, you know when, <laughs> when you were my, you know, when I was 24, you know, whatever, like it was the different game then it's like, yeah, but not really. I, I understand the struggles of it, you know, but it's just totally different. But, you know, I, I appreciate being around these guys. And it's funny how like time flies. Like you remember those veterans that had your back. Now I have, I have to be that veteran that has the young guys back. So it's just funny how fast it's turned. But uh, it is a different game. It's very analytical. There's not a whole lot of veterans that, you know, you know, I guess there's some, they listen to some veterans, but it's more about, you know, a lot of people have their own hitting coaches and that's just part of the game. Now there's people have their own, you know, their own people that they communicate with. So you have to find a way to break through that and let them know that, yeah, I know exactly what you're going through. I know how it feels. And 
I know what you're seeing. And we have some good young guys, though. A lot of guys just like to communicate and find out information. But like you said, man, it's a totally different ballgame. Mm-hmm. No, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, though. When I mean, there, there's not a lot of veterans. Like, even in, in, at your stage of being a vet, like when I was at your stage of being a vet, I still had Andy Pettit. <laughs> that that could that was you know what I'm saying. So yeah. there's there, there's no in between Nolan Arenado and and Jordan Walker. There's just that big gap. You know what I mean? Like there's no seven like you said five six seven eight year guy that you don't have to worry about. That like when I came to the Yankees, I came in and then I was able to relate to Jabba Chamberlain so that Andy didn't have to talk to Jabba. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm the I'm the midway and it and it allowed me to be able to to mature and to be in that older veteran that you saw me be at, you know, in 16, 17, and 18. Like it's 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 missing. It's a missing piece in the game that, you know, is it's it's, it's kind of hard for these young guys to relate to, like Nolan said, the the older veterans. And then it's hard for these guys to understand how to be a professional. You, you got to, yeah. you know, it's, you got to understand, you know, how to play a, a baseball season throughout the summer and how to take care of yourself and how to pay clubhouse dues, who to, tr- you know what I'm saying? Mm. How to treat people right and how to navigate the big leagues. Um, you know, there's not a lot of people in, in the game that, that can teach these kids. And there's a lot of kids in the game now, which is fun. It's fine. It's entertaining. But somebody's got to teach these guys how to be how to be you know professionals. Yeah. Mm. What the, you know the clubhouse dues one is interesting to me. Who who tells you <laughs> who who sits you down and is like hey 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 no 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 that's that that that, that that's cheap you can you, you that that's no good or like how, how do you like how does that get policed internally who how, how who did that for you see or who did, who did that for you Nolan and told you like hey this is how you take care of the guys who take care of you. For me, it was Ellis Burks. It was Ellis Burks right away. Like it was, you know, a month into the big leagues, and I think uh, one of I had one of the clubbies do something for me, and I don't think I tipped him, and they went and told Ellis because Ellis was my vet, and he sat me down, and he drilled that into me my whole rookie year. He was like, every clubby around the league, you need to be their best friend. You need to take care of them, and it'll help you navigate the league. So it was Ellis for me. Yeah, EB's awesome, man. By the way, that guy's the man. Love that guy. Uh, yeah, you know, for me, it was Tulo. You know, Tulo shot me down was like, hey, you know, you're a rookie. Give them 25 bucks to 40 bucks if they work hard for you. And he's like, and even if they don't do nothing about it, you still give them something because you're going to be here next year. And you're going to want them to take care of you next year and the year after that. And then as you became a veteran, it was always in the hundreds and whatever you feel that, you know, you needed to pay. But you, there's no doubt. I, I do always pay. You, you got to take care of the guys that help you, man. I mean, it's a grind. And there's times where I'm throwing my helmet or breaking my bat. <laughs> pissed off about my bad and then they're the one cleaning up taking my bad and taking it up you know what i mean I, they shouldn't be doing that type of stuff but they do it because they're trying to help us out and help us win and make us as comfortable as possible so there's always these guys and especially when you have family things going on they find a way to help you and you know they might deliver something to your house when you you know you're not able to on the road there's just there's just good people and you have to take care of those guys man i i'm i'm very passionate about the clubbies those are things those are people that i feel like uh you know, I really want to take care of them because they, they work extremely hard late nights. You know, like our clubbies, we got from London. We landed from London and they had to go straight to the ballpark and wash the clothes. You know, like yeah. that's not easy. That's a grind. You know what I mean? They want to go home and rest, you know, just like all we, we all do. So we I appreciate them. And you got to take care of those guys. Yeah, no doubt. N- Nolan, first of all, congratulations on uh well it's not first of all we've been into the conversation but you know about uh seventh of all congratulations on another all-star game man Thank amazing you. an eight-time all-star now 10 gold gloves not only 10 gold gloves but you've got six platinum gloves and anybody who's ever watched you play third base knows you, you're you're not just amazing over there you're obviously brilliant when you watch you know watching you play third base it's like you wouldn't even have to know baseball and you're like whoa who's that guy he's great at that what if you think about just the foundation of what made you an incredible defender what are some of the formative things that happened with you or that you worked on as a kid or how early does it go for where you start thinking about oh yeah like this has kind of always been in me well, I mean, I've always played. I love feeling. I mean, first of all, I love taking ground balls. And I think that's a, a lot of people just want to hit. But I love yeah. working on my defense. I really do. I really do enjoy taking ground balls and working on my defense just as much as I love hitting and working on my hitting. Um, and that's one of the main things. But, you know, the thing I've always done in my career in the offseason or 
during spring training, whatever it is. I just work on every play. I really do. There's, I try People ask, like, what's the secret? And I really don't have any secrets. It's really just work on every play. So when backhand, forehand in the hole, double plays, backhand, forehand, slow rollers, like all those plays. So when the game starts, those instincts just start to take over. Um, mm. If you're not working on those plays, it's hard. For, I feel like your instincts aren't going to like think that's a play that you can make or do. So I've always done it since I was a young kid in the minors or got to the big leagues. Um, is that I just take a bunch of ground balls, tell them hit them wherever, and I'm going to react and let my body tell me what to do and how I'm going to find a way to make this throw and make these plays. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of drills that are great, um, but I really believe fielding every different kind of ground ball you can is the is really the way because when the game starts, there's so many times. I mean, every year there's always some like I always get hit ball hit to me. I'm like, man, I feel like I've never gotten a ball hit to me like that. That's a weird <laughs> one. That's a weird one down the line where it bounced that way and went this way. You know, there's just different things. I think it's just working on everything you know and just so like i said when the instincts take over man you're just you're just going and you're playing hard and that's it did you always play shortstop like as a i mean a third base as a kid or or like little league and everything growing up were you a shortstop or was it always third base i, I did play third base like scout ball travel ball and all that but i played shortstop in high school um, i always played shortstop growing up i feel like that really helped me out a lot you know obviously having that range working on that range but third base was more of like a scout ball travel ball like scouts didn't see me as a shortstop so they wanted to see me play third um and uh once i then i just got it was either i was gonna get drafted as a third baseman or actually possibly a catcher so those are the only wow two. wow yeah. oh oh my you, yo i would have loved to seen your arm behind the plate that <laughs> oh, i got a good story i was i was doing a workout for the angels one time i was telling my teammates this recently and uh i got a grant i was uh, they asked me to go behind the play because I had a good pop time, you know, a good, decent pop time. So, like, all right, yeah. so I went to go block. A ball hit my elbow. I went down. My right elbow, I went down. I was like, oh, man, this is awful. <laughs> next next ball, I block again, hits my wrist. I've got, like, tears in my eyes. Like, legit, like, I'm not nah, <laughs> And then I go to the bullpen. I go to the bullpen. They're like, go catch in the bullpen. We'll watch you there. So, I go to the bullpen, another one right off my wrist. And I was, oh, like, my. down. And I was like, dude, I don't think I could do this no more. And the Angels never <laughs> called me again. <laughs> oh, that's great. Like, all right, this guy's not going to be catching. We're all right. Man. No, it was oh. bad, man. I swear oh. we didn't talk to the Angels for the rest of before that draft. It was crazy. Oh, my God. That's that's funny. Funny. I think they go back and just, I think they go back and stick you in the infield somewhere else and feel okay yeah, about it. It. <laughs> it was rough, man. It was a rough oh. day. I was like, tears in my eyes as I was hurting. And these guys were like, man, this guy's crying because he can't block the wall. I'm like, it was rough. <laughs> That's awesome. No, were you this way defensively, though, even as a, as a little leaguer uh, or, or, you know, in high school, like, I mean, it, it's interesting hearing about your practices now and how you continue to refine and, and maintain your level defensively. But how about even as a kid, how did you sort of develop those defensive skills? I, I feel like I always had a good arm. You know, I always had a good arm when I was a young kid and, uh, you know, my feet were always like good enough, right. You know, when you're mm -hmm. little, they're good enough, you know, yeah. and then, as I got older, my feet were just not good. You know, as I got into like middle school and then high school, my heat, my feet were not good again. But I had good hands and a good arm, so I can make up for like my bad feet. And then mm. once I got the pro ball, the big focus was like my feet and how do we work in on that first, you know, that first step and how we get the feet right. And then once the feet are moving right, then now I'm going to save my arm. I'm going to have to waste my arm all the time. So I was always, I had a good arm and good hands. But my feet weren't great. That was something that once those things, once my feet caught up with my hands and all that and my arm, that's when I started to really like take off as a defender. Mm, got it. Yeah. Um, now, you know, we talk about your defense because it's it's so exquisite. But, you know, you, you, you also uh, have been quite the offensive player in your career. Five silver silver slugger awards. You know, you've led the league in, in homers, I think, three times led the National League in home runs um, for you to produce year in, year out offensively at a time where I don't know if this is just a narrative I created in my head, see, but I feel like like when I was growing up and people would say back of the baseball card and I look at guys, I, it, everything seemed to be very steady, you know, and maybe it's because mm -hmm. I grew up with the late 90s Yankees and like there wasn't much fluctuation from Bernie Williams or Paul O'Neill or Derek Jeter, or, you know, whoever it might be. But I feel like now like there's a lot of fluctuation. Guys have great years and all of a sudden have you know, hit sub 200 the next year. You're like, what's going on? Nolan, you really, year in, year out, your numbers are so steady, so consistent. What goes into that on the offensive side of things? Yeah, I mean, I think 
for me is obviously taking care of my body and being able to be out there every day. I mean, that, mm. that's the goal is to play as many games as I can, man. I mean, over 150, it has to, I played 148 last year, which I wasn't m too proud about, but it's not bad, but I want to be in the 150s. And I feel like if I'm on the field, I feel like the chances, I have great chances of putting up the numbers and getting to where I need to go. Mm. Um, but it's really, that's the key, man, for me is making sure my body's right and just staying on the field. And then obviously the, you know, the hitting, the, the flips to the, all the video work that I'm trying to do to accomplish. But there's no doubt that if I'm on the field, I feel like I'm going to have a chance to get those numbers right. Mm. Did, have you got, did you guys ever face each other? You must've at some point, right? I, I think I, and he was in Colorado one time. Yeah, but I think it got it got shortened by rain. I think one rain. yeah, it was it was a rain game. So I don't I don't think it was uh, anything yeah, like one at bat. Yeah, yeah, two yeah I think I flew yeah. out. I think I flew out, and then I don't know if we faced him in New York. I don't know. I think I thought we did, but I don't know. I don't remember. But mm. yeah, I don't think I got a hit off CC. If that's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the one rain game in Colorado, like in, yeah. in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, I'm, always, I'm always curious about those matchups. No, we always like asking, uh, asking you know, different players, but especially players who've been in the league a while and, and who've had a lot of success. For you and your career, who has been the toughest pitcher that you faced? Oh man, mm. oof. Um, I think I have decent numbers against them, but the toughest one is playing Kershaw. Is one of them just as far as like so dominant, and uh, I've never seen a guy. Just like, you know, he's a he's the one pitcher that you, like you lose sleep at night. You're like, oh man, I'm not feeling good. And I gotta face Peyton Kershaw tomorrow. That's just <laughs> yeah. not good. I gotta, I gotta find a way to battle here. You know, I gotta sneak one somehow and then get to the next day. You know, that's that he's one of those guys. Scherzer's another one. Johnny Cueto used to be so tough on me. Um, and he knew it too, man. He was smiling at me after, and I just like, <laughs> oh man, he's all over. Um you know, Kenta Maeda, I know, Jap, he, he, he's through like three different sliders, man. I just I just can't hit him. I don't think I've ever gotten an extra base hit off him. And I faced him a lot in L.A. or in Colorado. Mm. Um, but for me, the I mean, those guys are pretty unbelievable. I mean, DeGrom, you know, is, you know, I've never seen a ball like his before. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. DeGrom is ridiculous, man. It's, I mean, yeah. he throws so hard. And it's just, <laughs> it's crazy, too, because it's, it's, it's really just one side of the plate. You know yeah. what I'm saying, but it's still it's when he's on and he's executing. It's 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 an, it's hard to hit. It is hard to hit. He's unbelievable. He really is. Yeah. yeah. What's it like seeing a 96 mile an hour slider? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you can hear it coming in. That's the problem. You know, and then you hear it coming in, and then it just I don't know, man. I, I just I've never seen like I said like a 95 mile cutter slider thing. I've never seen anything like that before. And <laughs> when he was doing it, you were just like, I, you know, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And no, it's. It's no wonder he has arm issues now. I mean, that's that, that feels like an unsustainable <laughs> action, you know. Yeah, like, that's I mean, a lot. It, it, yeah, I hope he comes back healthy, man, because the game's better when he's playing when he's doing well. Absolutely. You know? Amen. There's no doubt about that. Nolan, talking about um, having your body right and like being out on the field, and it's interesting to me the pride you take on the amount of games that you play and how much that means to you. What are what are some things you do? either with your nutrition, your fitness, your sleep, the different things you do to get yourself in position to be healthy and play the amount of games that you want. Yeah. Well, I think it, it just starts in the off season, you know, the off season where it starts, um, you know, you want to work hard, but you don't want to work too hard because you got to get the spring training and then, and then the hard stuff really starts, obviously when the season starts, but it's just all starts in the off season. And I try to eat right. Um, I try to eat right. I try to just make sure I get my work in, get my PT work in. Um, and then I recover after the games, you know, I think that's the main key is recovery, finding a way to recover and get to bed. And mm. uh, I've always been, I feel like a really good sleeper, you know, I'm always in the 10, nine and a half, 10 to 12 hour sleep. You know, I've always tried, I really try to take pride in my sleep and that's really helped me throughout my career. Um, and just getting to bed somehow, you know, and yeah. uh, that recover, you have to recover in this game. It's just so many games, man. And Sometimes the scheduling is ridiculous. You got like, you got like an off day, two games off day, and then you got like 20 straight. You don't know why, but you do. So you got to find <laughs> a way to recover, man. And, uh, you know, I just try to, as I've gotten older, I've realized that I can't take as much ground balls anymore. I can't hit as much as I want in the cage. So how am I going to do it? You know, maybe the first day I take ground balls, the next two, I don't take ground balls and I just hit, you know, it's just like finding a way to make my legs feel as fresh as possible so I can last the whole season. Mm, yeah. That makes sense. And the way you tweak that as you go along, you know, speaking of, of veteran guys, um, you uh, 
you know, you, you've played with some some big time legends. You've already mentioned a couple of them. I'm curious about uh, last year in uh, last year in St. Louis and being around Albert Pujols. What you know? What what are the kind of things that you know your takeaways? Either things you you observed, conversations you've had, things you learned. You know, what kind of strikes you just when you think about the experience being with Albert Pujols? Oh man, I mean, one of my best. My, when people ask me my favorite thing about my career, about what I've done in my the game, honestly, <laughs> and what it's not, it's not watching Albert hit seven hundred homers <laughs> and like going that streak is probably one of my favorite moments of my career. Um, yeah, just being a part of it, watching a legend go out. Um, you know, I've done some cool things, but nothing was probably as cool as I've ever seen is watching Albert do his thing. Um, but being around him, man, I mean, the guy is an insane worker. Uh, he still worked at that age, like extremely hard on his, on hitting his, his swing, his like routine, you know, he was just a different, he's just different than everybody else. You know, you know, we're here, he, he's, you know, he's here when it comes to hitting, you know, and there's times where he would hit balls out to center. He's like, yeah, you know, I was just trying to shoot him to right. And I'm like, I can't just shoot him to right and hit a bomb dead center, you know? And I'm just like, I can't be, you know, like just stuff like that. You hear that. And we look at each other like, like what? Like, I can't think about right field and hit a ball to center field. I can't think like that. You know, I just like, he's just a different, he's just different, man. And, uh, you know, his cage work, I mean, CC can, you know, attest how hard, like, I never saw him roll over twice in a row. I don't think people understand how hard that is. You know, you just, every day yeah. throughout the season, you're going to roll over, you're going to have a couple bad swings in the cage or whatever. Never seen it. I've never seen yeah. him do it. Just, wow. it was either a roll over or next one was a perfect backspin to right center. It was just like, stuff like that. You're like, man, is this guy ever just like, all right, I don't have it today. There's something off. Like, it's just, <laughs> he's so particular with his routine. Um, He's so smart about hitting. Um, I'm like I said, man. I mean, hey, watching him hit 700. I mean, me and Goldie talk about it. That's one of my favorite things about my career is just being a part of it and be, just watching him do his thing. Yeah, man, that, that had to be cool hit, watching him do it back in St. Louis too. And you know, what about yeah. the conversations about you know like hitting and his philosophy on hitting? Did you get a chance to sit down and talk to him about you know throughout the year about you know how he sees or what he's thinking about when he's at the plate? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, Albert, you know. You know, Albert would, you know, he, he's so committed to a plan. You know, there's times where I'm hitting and I'm, I'm going to look for this, you know, I'm going to look for this pitch. And if I don't get it and I strike out next at bat, sometimes I'm like, you know what? Screw that pitch. I'm changing, you know, and that's the mistake I make. Albert, you know, would strike out on a pitch that he that he wasn't looking for. And he's like, I don't care. Next pitch, I'm still sitting on it. I'm still going to get it. And then he gets in, then he hits it out. You know, it's just like, mm. you know, you know what I mean? He's just so committed to a plan. And I think that's what makes him so elite and different. Um, I know some people do that, but, you know, that's what I, you know, I'm trying to like be like that, right? We're all trying to be like Albert. And it's just sometimes you're just like, I can't, I don't know if I have the mental fortitude or the, you know, I, he's just so different than everybody else. So amazing. And just watching his routine, his cage work, and he's always, he never changes regardless if he's playing well or bad, you know, he stays with his routine. And I don't know, I just watched him and I try to take a lot of things from him. I think, but there just comes a point in time where there's certain things you just can't do that he does, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. H how about um, Yachty and, you know, just observing him and obviously a, a legend behind the plate? Oh, man. Mm. The greatest game caller I've ever seen. I've never seen anybody call a game like him. Um, mm. Just so, like, in tune with the game and so smart. And he just, he like, I mean, I swear, he could, he could grab any pitcher, no matter what ERA, and he'll find a way to get him through six innings. I swear. I mean, he's that good. I mean, he just – He's just like that. He'll find a way wow. to make it work. I mean, he's just different like that, you know, and um, just watching his game calling, his framing, um, you know, he knows that like, hey, if the, if the umpires give him a little bit off, he's going to stay off a little more and he's going to get a little bit more. You know, he like, you know, he just plays the game. He plays it smart. And, you know, I always said, you know, Buster was similar to Buster Posey, kind of like that, you know, where like, mm -hmm. you know, he knows that he's getting this a little off. So he's going to go off a little bit more and then start, you know, telling the umpire, like, I think that's on when it's not, mm -hmm. you know, Yachty's just knows how to just maneuver around a game and uh you know he'll tell the defenders like move over he'll tell me like hey get ready and then the ball hit get and then it does it gets rolled over to me you know it's just like yeah. <laughs> he just knows the games knows pitchers so well it's just it's really cool to play with him man and you know the best thing about playing with those two guys you know showing up to the ballpark every day you never wanted to let them down mm. you know what i mean you wanted to make you know you wanted you didn't want to let them down you know those are two veterans that are going to retire and uh even 
you just didn't want to let them down. You know, my motivation for the ballpark was the win, but it was also like, I want to, you know, I want to, I want these guys to go out the right way. So mm. it was, that was the best part about playing for them. That's yeah, really I mean, cool. Th- and those are like two huge holes to fill. I mean, obviously you're never going to fill, you know, uh, those holes in that organization, but not having Yachty, um, and it's not a knock on Wilson. It's just, a, it's just how great Yachty is and how prepared he is. You're going to take a hit. Like, you're going to take a step back when Yachty's not in your roster anymore. It just kind of is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Until you find a, a way to readjust. It, it's going to take you a little while because of the way he could call a game or the way he could tell, you know, like Nolan to move over. It's the same thing with A-Rod. Like, there's just a baseball IQ where, like, when he's not on your roster, he's not around. It, it takes you a little minute to adjust because it's like having another manager or coach, like, literally yeah. on the field with you. So, yeah. Um, you know, losing those two guys, but but Yachty in particular, you know, it takes you a minute to, to kind of get adjusted to not having him around every single day. I mean, they they literally didn't, you know, need a catcher for 17, 18 years. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. not, there's no there's no other teams that can say stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's unbelievable. So it, it's definitely different without him here. You know, Wilson's working his butt off and we love having him here. But yeah, it's just, you know, when you have a catcher for 18 years, it's just you know, like, and then they're not in the locker room or not, you don't see Albert every day. It's mm-hmm. definitely, you know, it's just definitely different. Mm, for sure. Yeah. Nolan, do you remember like your welcome to the big leagues moment? Not that there definitively is one for everybody, but is there one for you where you were like, oh, okay, this is the big leagues. Now I know. Um, oh man. I mean, there's a few moments, obviously going to Dodger stadium, my first, okay. my first, my second, my second big league game, just playing there um, was crazy. Um, but I'll be honest, my my first like actual moment, which is kind of weird, is probably my my first big year in 2015. Is because uh, when we used to go to Dodger Stadium, Vince Scully used to do like a pregame report on the, on the screen and talk about like the Rockies are coming into town, they're playing, facing Kershaw, blah blah blah. And then I knew I made it when he's like, the Rockies are coming into town, and Nolan Auto, who's playing great third base, is here. And he's gonna come in with hit these numbers. And I was like, dang, I made it. Vince Coley's saying my name. <laughs> and so that, that as an announcer, I, really I love hearing this. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, when he said my name, that like no one on on the Colorado Rockies are coming to town. That's when I was like, Oh man, I made it now. Cause like Vince Scully knows Vince Coley knows who I am and he knows I'm playing well, which is pretty cool. So that was my first that was probably my favorite moment of the big leagues. Of like my first year or my second or 2015 is when it happened. That's when I was like, wow, man, that's crazy. Oh, that's such a good story, man. That is such a good story. (laughs) Nolan, what's an ideal off day for you? What are you doing? Oof, there's a couple. I mean, I like to, I like to, most off days I go swim, try to get in the pool, move around a little bit. Yeah, you know, I try not to do too much stuff. If I'm not feeling great, I'm not gonna lie, I'll go to the ballpark and find, I'll go hit. I'll go hit. If I, if I, <laughs> wow, if I, if I, if man. I'll find my way in the batting cage for sure. And then, but most of the time I try to go swim, maybe hit some golf balls or play a little golf. And, uh, you know, those off days I try not to do, like, I don't want to do nothing because I feel like the next day I'm a little lethargic and I don't feel that energy. So I try to always move around, go swim and do something like that. Yeah. You know, Love see, it. I think it's easy to tell why this guy's been so good for so long. Even on his off days, he's sneaking into the cage, he's swimming. Yeah, exactly. That sounds like Ichiro. That's Ichi. The only person I know that would hit on off days or never take a day off is Ichi. Yeah, I mean, I I believe I'd rather not hit on my off day, but there's time for mental. I'm like, I got to get in there, man, and get this thing right. Yeah, that's awesome, that's how, man. That's how I feel about my golf swing now, where I'm like, oh, shit, I got to go. <laughs> go to the range. Yeah. Hey, hey, C said... He sent a uh, picture of a scorecard yesterday where he shot a 78. Oh, see? hey, I'm oh, trying. Wow, yeah, I'm man. getting there, up. man. I'm getting there. I don't know why <laughs> baseball players pick like the two hardest mental sports. It's baseball and golf. <laughs> and, man. and then golf right that. after. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's <laughs> only, man. I don't know why we pick those two, man, but we do. It's crazy. It, 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 we love it the torture, wild. man. We love it. Really <laughs> no, Nolan, we so appreciate the time today, man. Thank you for 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 chatting with us, and you know, I, I know it's been a tough season thus far for the team, but hopefully, you guys turn it around. And congratulations on another All Star game and another great season, and continued success to you uh, on your march to Cooperstown. No, I appreciate yeah. that, guys, man. Thank you guys for having me. Man. You guys are great. Appreciate you. Yeah, good luck the rest Thank of the way, bro. See you in Seattle. Thank you, guys. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man.